conversation had the girls triggered. We're talking fuckboys with my guest, Justin Rain. But how did you realize, oh, I'm a fuckboy? Because you fuckboyed the fuckboy. Tonight. What up, though? Welcome to Dear Black Gay Men Live. I am Jay the Gentleman. That's at J-A-I the Gentleman. And this is still our short, bullshit-free step out of our comfort zone to talk about all the emotional ups and downs along the journey to happiness. Now, we're having real conversations with real people live on the Dear Black Gay Men YouTube channel. Odds are, if you are anything like me, you have either been or dated a fuckboy at some point. Uh, my guest today is a reformed fuckboy who has turned from his toxic ways to become uh, my podcast bae. He's the host of Fuckboy Problems Podcast, which just started its new season today, and it's available everywhere you stream your podcast. Please welcome to the show, Justin Rain. Justin, how are you? Hey, hey, Jay. Thank you for having me. I'm so, so grateful. Thank you. What is a fuckboy? Fuckboy can be a lot of things, but I think um, in general, a fuckboy is a person that um, is one a runner and is putting their own selfish um, priorities in front of the other person. Like they want to get everything they want out of it, but they're not really concerned with what you need. It's all self-serving. And most of the time, a fuckboy is seeking out self-serving relationships. So they're selfish. Okay, so before we started, this comment says, I'm watching because I think I only attract fuckboys and I treat good guys who are interested in me like a fuckboy. What is that? I know My that. question for you is, why are fuckboys so prevalent? Fuckboys are usually this person right here. So a fuckboy isn't born a fuckboy. If you ever listen to it, yes, let's talk about the origin story. Let's really get down, right? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't broke it down. I'm trying to tell y'all, I'm going to release a book and everything. <laughs> but, you know, no one I'm is here born a fuckboy, just like no one is born a villain, right? So everyone has to go through something, whether that be in this person's case, where they probably were treated by a fuckboy, like horribly mistreated. They gave their all. And then at some point, you got jaded, right? You were like, you know what? I've been going around here trying to give give, 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 all these other people are bending over backwards or molding and changing yourself, trying to be amenable to what, you know, these, these niggas want, these fuckboys want, but then guess what? You get tired, right? You get exhausted. And in some cases you get jaded. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times that turns your heart cold. And guess what that means? Now I'm only going to think about me. I'm only in it for me. Fuck bitches get money. Is that like the origin story of fuckboys? Cause I, what, cause, they're like, in, in my head, I do think that a lot of us as in the non-fuck boys, have fucked around with Trey, gotten our emotions all tied up in him. He burned us one way or another, and then we end mm -hmm. up carrying that baggage into all these other non-fuck boy situations. Oh, absolutely. I think that's definitely the, like some people's experience, but I definitely believe that there are plenty of fuck boys that, I mean, work fuck boys transcends race and i don't believe there's such thing as white trade really so but i know there are white fuck boys <laughs> did you hear me i'm gonna repeat it again if you think there's white trade out there um perhaps in the swamp in a bayou and on the trailer you know what i've seen i was like there's white trade but or yes. white white adjacent trade but it, it's not the same okay it's Agreed. not the same uh, but i believe anyone can be a fuck boy it transcends race so I believe that's definitely some people's experience, but I don't believe like trade is the origin of a fuckboy. I think to your, what you what you said, a person getting burned, and then um, you know, and that turning their heart, that is the origin. Whether it was from trade, whether it was from in the 1800s, you know, or forbidden love, whatever the case may be, you know. I know. Before we were fil before we started filming, we said that you are from Arkansas, and trade is mm -hmm. looks a certain way in Arkansas. I'm from Dallas. They, those both look very like different similar. than Atlanta. Are there regional di are there regional differences in fuck boys? I think just like you um, when we were talking before we started filming, um, how like in season one we were talking about New York and it had a certain kind of sound or it was certain kind of personalities or archetypes that you will only kind of find in New York. I feel like the same thing um, applies to fuck boys. I feel like the energy of a city, like certain shit that like only like New York niggas are gonna do, is like only shit New York trade gonna do. Like. Um, in New York, it's all like parks, stairwells, 
rooftops. It's like that kind of stuff in California. Rooftops. It's all like, yes, it's all like in California. It's all like hidden hills. It's all warehouses. It's all very much like up in the middle of nowhere. And girl, I can I can be dead and found. You know, like I can just be gone. In Atlanta, it's very much we got to go out here. It's in my clubhouse. It's just random place. It's just like ignorant. <laughs> it's like country ignorant shit. Like coming, like it's like coming in, coming in this apartment and he gonna and the dog gonna be cracked. But you ain't gonna see me. But just come in. You right. you must have spent some time in Atlanta because that's a very specific. That is a very specific example. I mean, but you are you are I'm the guru. Saying, of people do so. stuff. I, I'm just saying people do things. People do things, and people make choices. You know, but I've lived. <laughs> okay, but now I hear you saying that the origin of the kind of the fuckboy mentality, usually not always, but usually is some kind of hurt some kind of hurt that mm -hmm. makes us withdraw within ourselves which is very which is very eye-opening for me honestly but then the question is is it easier to become a fuck boy when you've got you know you, you are attractive i think there are plenty of ugly fuck boys around here like if it'd, it'd be stuff i'd be sitting on just get on twitter just get on twitter if you ever want to see if you ever want to find an ugly fuck boy there is somebody on in there whining about someone who did them wrong they don't deserve it i do think there is who look like there that. is something in our cultural dna right there's something in our cultural mm -hmm. dna i think that makes us not predisposed but something about a fuck boy is just alluring i feel like most fuck boys fuck are, charismatic. are charismatic i mean yeah, I mean you gotta know how to slither around. You gotta like like most most fuck boys like that. I know they're like good at being fuck boys or like are truly fuck boys. Like they're stealthy. Cause I mean, how are you gonna be maneuvering? You gotta be slick. You gotta be charismatic. How are you gonna be able to like flip a situation around? Gaslighting is a big part of being a fuck boy. Cause I need to be able to turn these situations around. Like when you start calling out the disparity in the relationship or the disparity in how like and how I'm treating you versus how you're treating me, I need to be able to like mom fuck you and get you out of this. I mean, look at um, what's his name? Um, Juice Adore's husband. That's a fuck boy. That guy from ATL, whatever his name is, <laughs> and like he's Juice Adore. from That's season a fuck one. Boy. Yes, every time, yeah. every time we get to a line of questioning where I'm trying to be direct with you and ask you a direct ass question, all of a sudden we over here talking about, well, you know, I'm really, I'm really mad about the fact that you pick up my my dry cleaning up today, and why are you over here trying to mess up my dinner? I just sat over here and paid two thousand dollars for a dinner for you, and you over here want to bring up why why I didn't tell you who I went to camp with? And I'm like, sir, deflection. But because he does check all the boxes, he, he's charismatic, he fine as hell, he got that body, and he be gaslighting the fuck out of her. Yeah, and he's selfish. You know that. Oh, I want to use your son. I want to write a book. I want to use your context. Whenever he come around, it's always on his agenda, on his time. When he want to be sweet to her, it's always something. That one, I, that that one hit me a little hard. Not, I mean, <laughs> not your, not your I mom. Ain't fucking mom. Him. <laughs> I ain't fucking him or nothing. But I was like, but Drew Sedora's husband. Yeah, I, he's a prime fuckboy. Okay, okay. We're going to talk about you and your journey mm -hmm. out of fuckboydom when we come back. We're about to take a break. Let's, we'll, we'll Coming up. up. Therapy uncovers problems, but how did you realize, oh, I'm mm -hmm. a fuckboy? Dear Black Gay Men Live is brought to you in part by... That's one of the reasons why I love her so much because we can um, connect on so many levels like that. I, up pictures, I was like, this girl is beautiful. I was like, good job. Hit the notification bell because we're going live. Like that's the that's the least of my words. The size. Oh, I think relationships are becoming more complex. Tuesday and Thursday every week. Welcome to Dear Black Gay Men live at 9 p.m. Eastern. What up, though? Jay the Gentleman here. We want to know who you are as you're talking to us in the comments. So that we can see your name, visit StreamYard.com forward slash 
Facebook to grant access. That's StreamYard.com forward slash Facebook. Do it. Do it now. What uh, we're back with Justin Rain, who is a who is the host of Fuckboy Problems. Your new episode came out today. One thing I love about yes. your podcast is you kind of rip the band aid off of all of these conversations about fuckboys. How did you, for yourself, identify like these are the things that have made me fucked up that I need to overcome or let set aside? Oh, therapy. I feel like I talk about that all the time. Like therapy, definitely. Um, well, I, I was in a relationship, of course, like while I was like working on all these things. I've been in a relationship for working on these things. But honestly, it's just personal growth and therapy. Okay, what made you decide to go to therapy initially? Mm-hmm. And uh, I was depressed. Um, I had like my own like branded content site and it was like sponsored by Axe. I had like millions of dollars and I had like a staff of like 70 people, but I was like 24 years old. You don't give a 24 year old that much money, at least not me. Uh, <laughs> but um, unfortunately, my business partner, he mismanaged the money and we ended up having to like end the entire relationship after about two years. And at 26, having to like tell all these people before Thanksgiving that they weren't gonna have jobs anymore, like that, like broke me and that crushed me. So like during that time, my birthday's New Year's Eve, I was just really sad and down, depressed um, for my birthday. And one of my friends, he gave a therapist my number, and she just texted me and she was like, "Hey," she was like, "I heard it's your birthday, but I also heard you need a friend." And then it just kind of started from there. I couldn't imagine having a therapy session be like you a fuck boy like how did you come how did you realize how did you i mean therapy uncovers problems but how did you realize oh i'm mm-hmm. a fuck boy i think it was so i was i had been in therapy for probably like two years going into this point when i decided i wanted to do this podcast and the idea for the podcast actually came for me and helping my other friend launch her podcast so I spent like three months just like helping her like IDA and brainstorm pouring all this energy into hers and then she was like why don't you start a podcast she's like you have all these ideas you know exactly what you want to say you've like literally helped me like put all of this together and I was like girl I don't know what I would talk about and she's like we can talk about you being a fuck boy so Kayla Nezzi she called me a fuck boy that day um you should, if you're a woman or you know women who are interested in like female empowerment it's called the wellness glow up she has a podcast that I helped her create and launch um but yeah she called me a fuck boy that day at lunch and from there I was like you know what I have fuck boy problem now you have gotten thirst trappier here recently like <laughs> the body is body oh, but no. when you are one of the one of the pretty girls i think it oh. is easier to drift back into fuck boy kind of mentality no is it harder to so... say not a fuck boy oh yeah no it's definitely harder to say not a fuck boy absolutely i mean is it harder to do the right thing versus the wrong thing that is that's something Every day, I feel like every day is a choice to pour into yourself, to do what's right for yourself, all those things. So that's the kind of like internal monologue that I have in these in these situations. So when you talk about like the thirst trap, you're honestly, that's like more marketing than anything. I understand that I care about fashion. I understand I care about health and I understand I care about skincare and entertainment. And I felt like, and I still feel like a lot of times dark skinned black men, dark skinned gay men that look like me. I don't feel like I see a lot of guys that look like me. I always feel like I see Chris Brown. I always feel like I constantly see light skinned gay men. Oh my gosh, I get sick of it. One thing I do want to circle back to is uh, you talked a lot about, you never said these words, but it did sound like you were talking about self awareness, being aware of mm-hmm. how you are navigating the world, how you are interacting with people. Has that level of self awareness? I mean, it's one thing to be aware that I'm a fuck boy, don't do fuck boy shit no more. But has that translated to other aspects of your life? Are you more centered in the other aspects of being Justin Ray? 
feel like just I feel like self awareness, and I talk about this sometimes on the podcast as well. I feel like self awareness and self control they're two of our greatest assets as people. And I feel like as black men and as gay black men, those are the two things sometimes that we don't like and are that are important to us versus like young black women. They're taught to be very controlled and, and reserved and like be aware of like how you sit and how you stand and how you're being perceived at a very young age. Um, a lot of times men and even more so like black gay men, we aren't given we aren't we aren't given our same rules, but once you really get those, you're able to do anything. And I apply that with anything, with every relationship, with every interaction, with anything that I'm doing. I want to, one, be clear about how I feel in this moment. And I also want to understand how I'm entering into a situation, how I'm interacting with someone in a situation. Because I also care about how you're perceiving me. Now, I can't be in, I can't be responsible for what you take, but I can be responsible for my attention and energy that I pour into the interaction. Now that you are kind of heightened awareness about self, is it easy to find people who mirror that? Mm, no, it is not easy to find people that mirror that. I would say it's easy to know if it's going to work for you or it's not, or it's easier to kind of put everything in its box. So for me, now because I'm so self-aware, I can just be very clear. Like, and I can be honest with myself. If I'm going to move the fuck, I can just be like, yo, Justin, you want to fuck? And I can just be very clear and direct about, okay, like, I want to interact with you in this way because this is what I want to do right now. And self-awareness allows you to be like, okay, if this is what I say I want for myself, I have to set myself up for success. Or you can sign up for the bullshit. And then when it happens, you can be like, you can just go home with your tail wag, with, you know, between your legs. You be like, girl, I know what's going to happen. I know what's And I've done that too. I've done that too. I've been the like, girl, and then when the girls goes, don't. A few months ago that happened with but me. But the girls like, ain't, oh, ain't, like, yeah, ain't yeah. aware on that level. The girls ain't aware on that level. A lot of people level. aren't, They're yeah. Not. And that's what makes dating very, very difficult for me um, at this point in my life. It's made it very difficult because I can be, I can clearly very see like when you're not compatible or we're not on the same frequency or like even our mindset and how we look and walk through the world isn't the same. And once I, and if that don't match, then it's just like, all right, we can just fuck. Or we can just not fuck it out. We can just be friends. Which this is one thing that I do think it happens a lot is people, gay men, black gay men specifically, because that's who I fuck mm-hmm. with. Black gay men, because I think culturally there is a, a disconnect in our level of self awareness about our individual selves. What happens is I'm aware about me, you're not aware about you, and then I say something you don't like because I'm being direct. And then they be like, oh, he a fuck nigga. And I'm like, bro, I just said, I'm not, I'm not feeling you like that. Like how, how I don't get, I don't be getting it. The girls be well, in their feelings because I'm just, because I'm direct enough. But that's deflection, right? But that has everything to do with that issue and their inability to like process like your truth. Cause that's your truth as you see it. And so for me, right. I feel like that has more to do with I I feel like a lot of us as a whole, definitely gay black men, do not know how to process rejection. But a lot of people don't know how to process rejection. And that has to do with childhood trauma. I was just reading about that earlier today. I don't know why I've even read up arts about this stuff. But yeah, a lot of times childhood trauma yes. r- um, rears itself with attachment issues. And a lot of and a lot of queer people deal with attachment issues, even more so minority queer people. So when you have attachment issues and abandonment issues, a lot of times what those things deal with that combination means that you don't handle rejection well. And until you learn how to process and deal with radical candor and honesty and and rejection, then you're always going to lash out when you hear something that you want to hear, just like a child. When you tell them no, when they want some McDonald's or they want some ice cream and they throw their toy across the room, essentially that's the same thing that they did to you. Of course, I'm going to deflect. Now you're a fuck nigga because I'm a fuck nigga that can't handle your truth. That's the real thing. I'm I'm here. I'm here for a lesson. I'm here for a lesson. <laughs> Let's take a break. Yeah. Let's take a break. Okay. We'll be right. We'll be Coming right back. Up. Stuff starts changing. In it. it was like an earthquake, and you felt the energy in the room change. You didn't want to acknowledge it then. That was a sign. Read the room. Oh my God, that's Molly, so you are weird. in danger. Uh, no, no, no. Oh, no, I can't. You, no hugs. 
My work ethic is what above you yours. You, you cannot about? fucking sit with me. Like, well, apparently you were you weren't on mute when Brandy came at you in that group chat. So apparently you did see it. How old are you? How old are you? In a real tough, you know what I'm saying, discussion right now. But hey, what's a what's a show without drama? Huh? He's at work and he don't want to deal with y'all bullshit. Exactly what he said to me. You've been called out on that shit before. You be contradicting yourself. My thing is just take ownership of the shit that you do. You get slapped. And, and, you, and, and, and you get slapped. Too. You get slapped in front of him too, though. Slap. You get slapped for him too, though. You, you, you get slapped for him too, though, Bitch. Bitch, I play on me, ho. Bitch, could you do that? You know you fucking wrong. You know I got attitude. Don't touch You got fuck you. Stupid ass. Get in the conversation. She this did. comment says, I did a good job. It's time for a congratulatory ejaculation session. Chat live on the show and get exclusive content. The bottoms are going to eat me up for this in the chat. Join the Dear Black Gay Men Insiders group on Facebook. Okay, family, welcome back. Uh, the channel is growing, but I still need your help. So if you're enjoying the conversation, be sure to subscribe to Dear Black Gay Men on YouTube. If you really love us, you'll hit the notification bell so you never miss an episode. Now, let's get back into the show. Like, I can see you. Can you see me when we're not on camera? Yeah, I can see screen? you. I will win. No, they, I can't see you. Oh, you saw me looking oh, at reaction and looking at your little stuff? Because you were clutching your pearls with, on the commercial. Oh, that last I was like, whoa. <laughs> I was like, what is this we're seeing here? Fuck I was like, is this shit. acting? Is it this was, reality? I was like, wow. It's totally reality. Cause I so I interviewed several people that were in that fight. And mm -hmm. they are they are up in our arms about what's going on there. But we won't need to talk about that. One thing that you and I talked about before in, in the pre-interview, uh, my production partner and you were in the DMs talking about this, but I want to know how can we prepare ourselves to identify fuck nigga shit in other people. And so brainstorm together and I want to hear some ways that we know what fuck nigga shit looks like as we're dating. The first way you can always tell if you're dealing with a fuck boy is one if he has double standards. So if you sitting around here and you can't date and go on dates with other people, but he over here going on dates with other people, you might be doing what a fuck boy. And if when you decide you want to go on a date with someone else and he find out and he acts funny, there you go. <laughs> that be number one. I want to see what it, Wait, 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 wait. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Cause, so it sounds like you're saying fuck boys are insecure. Because that sounds like insecurity to me. Oh, absolutely. Fuck boys can definitely be insecure. Fuck boys are super sensitive. Why do you think they're running from their shit? Because they don't want to deal with it. Fuck boys are running from their shit. You don't want to deal with this, your problems. You, you don't do. Deal, you don't want to deal with healing from the emotional trauma that you dealt with. You're running from that trauma from person to person, from thing to thing, from situation to situation. You're not sitting still. That's why the second thing I was going to tell you was that if he can't be clear about where he's going in his life, a lot of times you're asked like a fuck boy, like, oh, so like, what you want to do with your life? What, um, what are your intentions? Like, what are your focus? A lot of times they'll try to dodge around that situation. You can't ever get a clear answer because his life is unstable. He can't he, he can't be clear about what what his intentions are, what's going on in his life because he knows his life is in chaos. Okay, so put a pin right there because I got a story and you tell me what this sounds like. Okay, let's but go. I have a friend of a friend, right? And he, we all see that his life is in, unstable, as you just explained it. He mm -hmm. don't, he don't know whether he coming or going. I can't say too many things that he's been in because all of my friends watch my show and they would know who I'm talking about. And I don't want to put his business out because I don't want to do fuck nigga shit. But one thing that I do know about him is he can mask over his fuck boy ishness because he makes a lot of money. So he doesn't see it as instability. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's it. You are preaching good today, Justin Ray. You are. Preaching you can be very casual. Okay, so okay. the okay. first you can no, you can cut, you can pull up in your BMW. I already know what you look like. He is laced, paced, and traced every time. But then it's just a mess. When you go up, when you when you when you walk up in it, it's just like a mess. Uh huh. Because it's <laughs> easy. To be, it's easier to be a fuckboy with money. 
Because you can pay your way out of your oh, shit. You okay. can get up in your car and go. You can Uber your way from that scene, baby. Oh, God. Oh, no. He's a good boy. It's just, it's very funny that you, you started describing You him. can play the like, victim and run away. <laughs> yeah, I know. Oh, no. He got a BMW, no, He always Justin. gets a mom. He probably, spent him, he probably spent him money on the person that he wished won him. It's so stupid. <laughs> And I don't know if you are people, a fuckboy whisperer or a mind reader. Like a media, you you are like the fuckboy medium. That's what it is. You are like the Teresa Caputo of fuckboys. <laughs> the first one is unstable. The second one is double standards. Mm -hmm. Oh, the third one. Went, oh, baby, when he's not the main character, he checks out. So the focus has to be on him. If we're not focused on you and what you want, whether that be I'm texting you and I'm like, yo, like, you know, I miss that thing. Da, da, da. Like, yo, like, I want to do this thing. It's all about I, I, I. So when they are not the main character in you all situation, they usually are either checked out or unavailable or they're going to ghost you when the situation no longer is focused on what they want to be focused on. Sound familiar? When you started pressing for more? Oh, you started bringing up day when you started talking about being exclusive. All of a sudden, the communication started slowing down, didn't it? When you started talking about, oh yeah, why we can't go on days? Why we don't gotta just hang out at your house? Oh, I bet you, I bet you stuff started shifting, didn't it? When you start asking about, are you who? Do you be talking to other people? Do you be dating other people? I bet you stuff started changing, didn't it? It was like an earthquake, and you felt the energy in the room change. You didn't want to acknowledge it then. That was a sign. Read the room. Oh my God. That's Molly, so you weird. are in danger. You can just use those three. You always know. Okay. So we identify the steps. Can, do mm -hmm. we drop them like a bad habit? What do we do? I think that's for. So I think there's nothing wrong with dealing with a fuckboy. I had a fuckboy that was a fuckboy. I had a fuckboy that was a fuckboy and I live for it. I, it was amazing because, you know, like I can be, I was very clear about what I wanted. I want you to be my fuckboy. Like, I want you to serve this purpose. And a fuck, and a fuckboy works perfect, perfect as a fuck buddy. Because y'all both got y'all agendas, you got yours, but he thinking his agenda, oh yeah, I'm, 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 I'm real slick, oh yeah. No, 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 motherfucker. Like, I just want you for that. And you thought like, oh yeah, you're looking out today. No, bitch, you're serving me. But guess what? You're gonna fall in love with me because I'm never gonna be giving, I'm not gonna be paying attention to you past that. I had a fuckboy, every time he would come over, he would bring me weed and food from his abuela. I live for it. I love the hey, and, and, and I love a good plate of food, okay? Yeah. When I tell you, one month in, he over here talking about some like, uh, when we gonna go out to dinner? I said, dinner? I said, where would you take me? He said, Cheesecake Factor. I said, that's okay, baby. I said, go take your clothes off, baby. It's okay. I said, I ain't hungry this week. <laughs> Oh my god! Oh god! Oh my god! That was so good. When I tell you that, war, when I tell you that, wore him out. That wore him out from the bed. Because you fuck boy, the fuck boy. You outmaneuvered well, like, the fuck just boy. Just keep him in a box. Just keep him in a box. Don't be expecting like boyfriend things from a fuck boy. Don't expect um, honest. Don't expect all those things. Like you just need to be clear with yourself about what purpose you want for them in your life. And you need to also have the self-awareness and self-control to manage your emotions to be able to only do that. Now, if you don't have that, I feel like some people aren't meant to have fun buddies. Some people don't have the emotional strength to, or be, they're not able to compartmentalize to only do that. You need to, you need to have the self-awareness to know what yeah, you can sign up for it too. Let me gather myself together. Let's take a break. Not gather. <laughs> <laughs> Cause the way you just piece me together like that, I need to take a break. We're, we'll be, we'll be right back. <laughs> what up, though? The conversations stay lit on Dear Black Gay Men podcast. Hookup, entanglement, situation, relationship, everything from dushing to dating. A top verb, but I am not a top now. I am a guru at first dates. It's new every Wednesday. Subscribe now.
Justin, this has mm-hmm. probably been one of the best conversations I've had in a long time. Oh, one this one is just so good for me too. Justin Rain's podcast is Fuck Boy Problems. You can stream it anywhere. Podcasts are streamed. Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Justin, I want to thank you so much for joining me today. This was great. Oh, uh, thank you for having me. So, for everybody, have you ever been getting to know somebody as Justin talked about? Things feel like they're getting serious and then the dating situation falls apart. Usually, that sends us into what I call the reckless hoe phase. But the reckless hoe phase is an important part of dating. Reckless hoe phases helps us cleanse the palate from a failed situation. It gets all the shit off the plate, cleans it up, hopefully so that we can move on with our lives. But the problem is y'all don't ever get it clean. I had to learn this the hard way, probably because I was a fuck boy, as Justin explained. But we leave our plate repeat, replete with the residue of some fuck boy who did us wrong. And then we make the next man pay for the bullshit that some fuck ass nigga put us through. We ain't hoeing right. The gotcha is recklessly hoeing cleans the palate so that we can enter our next phase, our best phase, clear. So, dear black gay men, clean that shit up. That was our show. I am Jay the Gentleman. That's at J A I the Gentleman on IG. If this episode made you feel a little more dope, be sure to share and subscribe to the Dear Black Gaming YouTube channel. Hit the notification bell so you never miss an episode. And then share this episode with someone who needs a dopeness reminder. The podcast is new on Wednesday. We are live on YouTube every Thursday. So follow at Dear Black Gay Men on YouTube, IG, and TikTok so you never miss a thing. I am Jay the Gentleman. That's at J-A-I the Gentleman. This is Dear Black Gay Men Podcast. And I will talk to you next time. Bye.